Hi everyone, it is Max Miller here, and today is a very big day because the Tasting History Cookbook is out today. It is on bookshelves as we speak. I'm so excited that it's out in the world. Um, thank you to so many people for helping me work on it. My Patreon patrons, lots of people who help me with translations and finding art and editing, and, and Anne Folkwine, who was my co-writer, just... So many thank yous to, to go around. I can't wait to share it with people and uh, see what you think. Hopefully it's all good stuff. Thank you, Max. So welcome to Catch Up With Max and Jose. It's been a hot minute. Uh, just real quick, we did try to record an episode on Morocco and oftentimes, time and time again, we talk about all our tech issues. Uh, yeah. I got a little rusty and the microphone picked up nothing from nothing. what we recorded. So, <laughs> but we're back because it is a very special day, as Max mentioned. His book is finally out on sale yes. wherever fine books are sold. Uh, so check it out. And even some not so fine books. <laughs> some dingy alley. <laughs> <laughs> Opens his coat. You want to? You want some tasting history? <laughs> John Cano. <laughs> Can Max I give you Miller. a taste? <laughs> dingy with babish. <laughs> But um, we want to say thank you so much for the last three years of support. Um, yeah. The book has been a labor of love, and it's been a long road coming. I mean, I still remember when you were uh, taking that, those photos, uh, not by yourself, obviously. Yeah, uh, no, that was that was the best day of the entire the entire process was was the photo. Just it's like four days. Just a marathon of food cooking and food yeah. photography and. You yeah. said you learned a lot. I learned day. so much, and I didn't have to do anything except for be there and like direct. Um, I had other people cooking, other people styling the food, people lighting it and taking photos. Um, and I learned so much while watching it. My, my food photography, if you look at about like March of 2022, there's a, there's a shift in how uh, my food photography has, has come. I mean, it's still not fantastic. It's nothing like the pictures in the book, but it got better simply by watching the, uh, the experts at their work. That's right. So, um, really quick about the it is hardcover, and there are some nice quotes. Some people said nice things, some nice things about yes. you, including Phil Rosenthal and John Cannell. I love his channel, his Instagram especially, and Simon Jumdar, and friend of the show Kenel Bala, Kenel Bala, or Jiggle Daddy. If you want to <laughs> hear more about Aspic, look up Kenel Bala. Yes. <laughs> but, yeah, they were all really kind. Um, so when I first saw the first run of the book. I got really emotional and excited because inside of the book, it says, Aww. for Jose and his endless patience. And uh, if your mom is watching this right now, I am so sorry. <laughs> yeah, it should I have been not, to my mom. <laughs> I did not ask for this. It should have been his mom, I, I feel. Um, but he's the one who had to put up with all of my complaining and we, griping. We and survived whining. the pandemic together and I had to deal with. And just about the book. Oh, there's just walking so many things that plank. went wrong. Um, and a lot of things have gone right, because clearly the book has yes, made it out yes. of shelves. More things went right than wrong, and that's all that ever matters. It's just and, that you come up one, one above. Yeah, and over the last few days, um, I've been posting on my Instagram and Twitter just that the book has been doing really well on Amazon. So it's been a top 100 for, for a hot minute. And, yeah, super and exciting. And you've been right above Snoop Dogg uh, from... <laughs> From crook to cook <laughs> for quite most of your run. I love and hate that title. His yeah, title. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I just uh, love it. I, it's, it's, it's so funny. So I'm just like, oh, come on. But it's, it's hilarious. But anyway, so um, we're excited. So now that the book is out, too, if you do buy the book, please leave a review. Yes. Um, if you go to Target and you find his book, take a picture, tag Max. Yeah. Tag, tag me. I'm a nobody, but you know. I want to Why see not? It. We like to see him. Yeah, it's exciting. It's cool to I, see. I, like I, tomorrow, tomorrow, and like later this week, I'm gonna try to go to bookstores just to like see it out in the wild. There's gonna be a lot of <laughs> photos of yeah. that. <laughs> um, but yeah. Signing random books, even when they, people gotta, don't ask me. You, you got to start carrying a sharpie around. I know. I know. Yeah. Exactly. Would it be? Weird I just bought blue sharpies today. Would it be weird if you start? signing copies of your book in stores and leaving it for people no i guess people do that like is that a thing that. i think you're supposed to let the people at the bookstore know you're doing that but uh, that is a thing can you comment if you, if you guys think it's kosher because i'm not sure I, i'd feel weird it's like <clears throat> what jerk yeah who wrote, wrote on my book? book 
Anyway. But at least you can tell, with my signature, you can tell that it's me. At least the max part. <laughs> Miller sometimes gets a little, a little scratchy, but um, there are some authors who, like, you can't tell what their signature actually says. Mm. I was at one, one bookstore and they were saying that they had an author come in and just did like two, two vertical lines. That was their signature. Mm. Well, what? That could just be a mistake. And if you don't like Max's signature, he did try to get a really fancy signature. He went through a few options. <clears throat> did. But... It, like I got a calligrapher to help me create a special signature just, you know, for signing books and, and, and stuff. Um, but it was just way too complicated. I was like, I'm, I'm gonna do this. Yeah, yes, we, yes, yes. And after like four, and I had a stack of 700, I was like, yeah. nope, not doing that. We did not expect uh, so many copies to yeah, sell I through and so, thank you. <laughs> so much demand that he had to uh, just kind of had to like, at least it's legible. You have, to, you have to, yeah, no, it's legible and you and, and it's closer to my like real signature. Yeah. Um, Your writing's not the best. Surprise. It's not. It's not. <laughs> Actually, that's kind of what I'm worried about with the in-person book signings is, you know, I want to write a note to people, but my, just my like printing, my writing is not great. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. So hopefully my notes to people will be legible. Uh, so, but speaking yeah. of uh, in person, you are doing a few pit stops. Uh, you're gonna hit Seattle, Portland, um, San Francisco, San Francisco, here in LA, Phoenix, my hometown, um, and we just got confirmation of New York on Tuesday, the thirtieth of May. I'm going to New York. Yeah, it's a bookstore that's all. Um, I think it's called Kitchen. Something in Larder? No, that's that's Seattle. I can't remember, but it's on the Upper East Side, and it's, it's all cookbooks. Um, that's exciting. Yeah, yeah. So I will. So it was Book Larder. They're all cookbooks. Yeah. So I will be joining too. Uh, I'll probably be in the back, kind of just like judging silently. Except um, not in Tempe or Phoenix. Yeah. Because oh, I can't get him. Oh, and there. Josh from Mythical Kitchen will be. Uh, yes, he is the moderator, moderator, like asking questions and and getting pull, pulling. Pearls of wisdom yeah. out of me. So um, in here in LA, the one in, in LA, LA yes, is, in Santa Monica, which is next week, next Tuesday. Yes, yes. he's funny. Yeah, Josh. he's a lot of fun. <laughs> anyway, so um, this is quite the journey that you've been on now. As far as like not just the book itself, but the channel. You know, we hit the three-year mark uh, late February. That's yeah, uh, back when we released the first episode during the 2020 pandemic. Um, did you ever think that you would write a book? No, I was, no, we were having this conversation last week, like that it's doing as well as it is, is mind boggling. Cause this was never on my bucket list. <laughs> this didn't even cross my mind to write a cookbook. Um, so how much can change in three years, you know? And yeah. um, yeah. I'm glad that I did, mission <laughs> accomplished. But yeah, totally not, yeah. I mean, honestly, all the things on my bucket list, none of them have happened. I, I never get to have done any of like, and the best laid plans of mice and men often go wrong. Life's funny um, that way. Yeah. But I think even taking a step back, it's the channel, you know, the fact I never that it expected took off. I mean, to happen. Yeah. Uh, you know, for new viewers, it's like you were furloughed from Disney, but you had started the channel, you know, like a few a couple weeks, weeks prior. Before. And <clears throat> if, and then you had bought equipment and if you, you wouldn't have spent that money. Yeah, I wouldn't yeah, have if paid you had for a camera. Because they're very, yeah, yeah, yeah like expensive equipment. And and just, you know, for a time we were talking about like, oh, wow, Max, you've been furloughed. Like, I'm going to drive Uber or Postmates because, you know, like, got to make ends meet. And then to have come all this Which would be bad for me because I don't like driving. <laughs> You're a safe driver, though. I think I would, yeah. yeah. I am. I, don't I think just don't like it. Yeah. It's stressful. Fair. Yeah. I'm a passenger princess. And I'm always stressed. Even though he's a good driver, I'm always stressed yes, as being in a car. So shout out to my boss. Very safe. I, I drive <laughs> very safely. Very safe. Sometimes but, uh, too safely. Like, I, I'm, I go slower than... But I'm always with the flow of traffic. It's just like, I, I never go more than nine miles over the speed limit. All right. No one wants to hear about your, I, your okay, driving anyway. habits. <laughs> Let's move this along. So, um, so thanks, th thanks again to uh, my Catch Up With Max and Jose subscribers because I, I figured those ones that are actually watching this up to this point so i know it's been a, it's been a minute and again we did try filming something but uh we are tech challenged so uh i we will come back i, I promised uh a garden tour now that it's spring so things yes. are blooming so there's a lot of flowers Looking good 
I post a lot of it on Instagram though. Um, I have over 30, da 30 David Austin roses planted through our home now. I have a laid up plan of how the pinks sit with the pinks and the whites sit with the whites. Not because of segregation, but just because that's how the previous owner had yes, all the whites in good. one area. <laughs> Um, but, uh, we, I will do that in an upcoming episode, I promise. I'm gonna... Hold me to it. Like... I will. I will. Remind me. Like, I remind you to do things. Like. It was an interesting thing, too. So, I had never heard of David Austin until he started getting into roses. And I remember, like, when I was looking at the website, there was one called Constance Spry. And it turns out it's the first of the English roses that he did. Mm -hmm. And yesterday, or two days ago... I'm working on next week's episode, Coronation Chicken, um, and it's from the Constant Spry cookbook. I'm like, I recognize this name, I recognize this name. And I'm learning, it turns out she's a florist, she was a celebrity florist, and she was the person he obviously named that first rose after. So it was just like, weird. Hmm. I thought that was very cool. There you go, see? See, maybe, maybe our interests are finally colliding. And, yeah. <laughs> and it's not just food history. Although that's your interest and not mine. But, you know, could be fun. Uh, yeah, no. I watch a lot of Rose videos, so I'm thinking maybe eventually this might just become a gardening channel. I don't know. Um, they're quite peaceful if you watch them online. Usually there's like sets they of, are. There's sets of show, Chopin, and it's just like pretty flower, pretty flower, pretty flower. And I watch these videos while I do laundry. Um, so you gotta get the ASMR voice, though. <laughs> I, well, I don't have that. Like NPR, you know. But a uh, uh, fun idea, David because I know so many people watch your channel and use that to fall asleep. Not because you're boring, or maybe because you're boring, but... I drone. <laughs> he drones. I do drone. Um, I was thinking, it's like, Max, what if you read a book, or some old history document, and just an hour of and something bedtime... Philip Sinkney's. <clears throat> right. Uh, <laughs> sounds very sleepy and doozy. Sleep and doozy. <laughs> But anyway, so I was thinking, it's like, yeah, read this ASMR. Like, maybe that's still a thing. Because I still see it on your on your Reddit page and yeah. people tweeting about yeah, it. It's like, totally. oh, I fall asleep to this guy. All the time. All people the time. falling asleep to me. Yeah. But, Even um, at the bank. I'm like, sir, I'm still I'm still here. <laughs> Please. <laughs> but, um, all right. So enough of the book. Again, if you don't buy it, there's cheaper Kindle editions. Internationally, it's, you can just go on to Amazon and they will ship internationally. But different um, international Amazons will be getting them as well. Australia, New Zealand, uh, England, Canada, over the next month or so. The thing is, they they didn't expect um, so many people to, to buy it, so they didn't print enough copies. So more copies are on their way, but um, you might have to wait until like June. But it will come. So order. Look, order today. And it has a picture of this handsome fella. Though it's at a lot of bookstores, like physical bookstores, mm -hmm. which I always prefer to buy things at physical bookstores. There are just so few of them. I love going around to me. Noble, personally. There are none around here. Wait, there's one down the street. A bookstore? Barnes and Noble. That is not down the street. Uh, it's a ways away. Okay, okay. Well, anyway, so I don't want this episode to be too long, but I do want to hear a little bit about Morocco. Or I want you to tell people about Morocco because, you know, I. Yeah, you actually did so much cool stuff there. That... Yeah, no, it was awesome. And I suggest anyone who has even had an inkling, and even those who haven't, to go to Morocco, go to Morocco. It is a really, really cool country. The people are really, really cool. And whatever you have in your mind of what it's going to be like, it is not. It's so, so different than what we expected in the best of possible ways. And people were wonderful, and the food... Oh, the food was so good. Every single meal was so good. So much so that I was kind of sick the whole time and it did not stop me from eating because the food was that good. <laughs> I think the, the water just did not agree with me, but I was like, no, but I'm still gonna eat this. Um, I'll, I'm gonna have some Morocco episodes coming up, um, making some of the dishes that I made over there. But no, it was just, it was, what was so cool too was, you know, we'd be in the Sahara Desert one day in the morning and eight hours later, we were in a blizzard up in the Atlas Mountains. Like, it's just such a diverse country, even though it's a pretty small country. I mean, I, mean, I think you, it's you smaller did, than... You did drive eight hours, though. Yeah, it, you kind of have to drive <laughs> everywhere. They Mass transit is not there. Well, you got on a camel, though. So that's this cool. This is not mass transit. <laughs> no, no, I'm not, I'm I did get right. on a camel, though. How was the camel riding? 
I enjoyed it. I fell off, but I enjoyed it. Wait, wait, wait. You fell off? So, okay. when the camel, when you're supposed to get off, the camel goes down onto two, onto his two front knees, and you need to, like, As lean back. back knees. Right. And then he drops down onto his back knees, okay. too. And so, for a minute, you're, like, at this angle. And what are you supposed to do there? <clears throat> and you lean back. Um, and I knew that this was what I was supposed to do. What I didn't know was that he was going down, and it wasn't a gradual thing. He was just like, boom, onto his knees, um, because the guy who gave him the command did so in Arabic, and I don't speak Arabic. <laughs> what? So, so he went down onto his knees, and I went off into the sand. Luckily, the sand of the Sahara uh, is very soft. Is there any so, video? No. Oh. My parents lament not being able to capture me falling off the I table. wish I was there. I'm lamenting yeah. not being there to see it. Yeah. But, just thinking um, about it. Sometimes. Other than that, it was great. My mom did not care for the camel. Oh. But did they spit at you? That's what I am. They did not. Oh. But they did nip. Like they That's have great. a lot of gums. <laughs> uh, okay, it's fantastic. Um, yeah. No, so <laughs> I'm quite jealous that I didn't get to go. I, th I was still working. Mandalorian was launching, and right now I'm still working. Uh, Little Mermaid uh, and Indiana Jones are right up, and then Ahsoka. So if you're big Star Wars fans, Lucasfilm. You know, lots to look forward to, so it's going to be a very busy summer. But um, I am going to go to a few of the bookstore signings, so... Yeah. And who knows where we'll end up in October. Maybe Chicago, you said? Maybe. Maybe Chicago. Eventually. Yes. But anyway, uh, so outside of Morocco, any, any other future trips that are coming up? Because I feel like you <laughs> dropped this video out of nowhere, and I think people were very excited just to really yeah. be there on location. So I'm going to be going to Greece in September uh, with some friends to celebrate all of our 40th birthdays. We're all turning 40 this year. Um, and what, you're 40 years old? I turned 40 last month. Oh, wow. And uh, so, yes, Greece. So if anyone lives in Greece or knows people who live in Greece that can, you know, uh, help set up a tour or cooking experience or something like that, let me know. Because um, currently I have nothing planned except that I'm going to Greece for two weeks. Very exciting. Yeah. I'll be here. <laughs> Message me, keep me company. <laughs> but the next trip, you're coming. Where is that? I don't know. I don't know. We haven't planned that one. All right. Well, anyway, so thank you for sharing your, your adventures. Um, and thank you guys for the time and following and supporting and all the love. It's, it's It really means a lot. And, you know, if you can buy the book, watch the channel, watch the video, subscribe, like. Leave a positive comment. <laughs> I'm still collecting mean comments. Not to say leave a mean comment, but uh, yeah, don't just leave mean comments. For people. <laughs> people, oh, and also leave good comments on like Amazon and and good reads and stuff about the book. It really helps. What if they don't like it? Then just keep your mouth shut. All right, keep it to yourself. You have nothing nice to say. Keep it to yourself. <laughs> exactly. You heard it here. <laughs> Maxwell, come on. All right. Well. Thank you so much. Uh, it's It's been quite the journey that you've been on, and I've been Very along exciting. for the ride. And thank you for dedicating the book. Wait, is it dedicated, or is it just... Yeah, yeah, it's the dedication. For Jose. Oh, this is my book. <laughs> and then there are, like, lots of acknowledgments in the back of, of uh, many, many other people who helped. Yeah, I, I mean, you got to think... I don't know, Jeremy and just... I don't see all your Patreon pages. people, yeah. Like, Again. Who did the, all the recipe testing. The Patreon pages. so much of it. Helped so much with the hair. So, recipe so much. Because yeah. once Max makes a recipe, for the most part, he kind of moves on. And then and then I'm usually begging, hey, can you make this thing again? Like, I've been begging for the cheesecake for since you first made it yeah. three years ago. <laughs> yeah. So get on that. Yeah. Um, they were Also with the recipe testing, though, like, I can only do it so many times before, like, I know what it's supposed to be or whatever, but when I give the recipe then to 10 different people of all different levels of you know culinary expertise and then get their feedback i'm able to like really narrow in and be like oh clearly i am not clear when i say this and this is and that's know, what another works, very, very interesting point is that what a recipe in the modern era is is not yeah the, i mean yeah. these are modern that they're, they're old recipes but they're <laughs> yeah. obviously i mean they're they're from the show yeah but that but didn't exist as far as like what the recipe right. the, yeah the, the standard yeah. kind of thing and then Anne Folkbein really helped because she is able to take the recipe that I write and then say, okay, this is actually how you need it for a cookbook. And like, it is a skill that takes a long time to learn and 
I just don't have it, and she does, so thank you, Anne. Thank you, Anne. And thank you, dear viewer. Um, <laughs> dear viewer. <laughs> as far, uh, what's next for you, then? Do you think a, a TV show, a movie show? I don't know. Maybe a movie? Like a, a movie? A of live action history. tasting history? As live opposed action. to animated yeah. <laughs> Why not both? <laughs> um, yeah, we'll pitch it to Pixar. Hey, the sky's the limit. So, thanks again for watching. And we'll see you at the next Catch Up With Max. Whenever it happens. That's right. I'm trying. <laughs> and Jose. <laughs> That's what you would want me to say I'm there. Gonna, <laughs> I'm not going to edit it because, man, I am tired. I picked it up. I picked it up in time. <laughs> wow. Bye. <laughs>